This is great. Really, really good. Skis Mike. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that the uh, Green Jersey Club then? What's the plan for today? Come on, let us know. He's gonna let us know. Well, we're gonna do a ride, aren't we? We're gonna do a ride. Leyburn, yeah. It's gonna go to Leyburn today, into North Yorkshire. It's gonna be hilly. Depending on how we feel, we might get butter tubs in and maybe park rash. <sighs> Out of Kettlewell. Oh. Yeah. So, so let's go for a ride. Let's go for a ride. So I'll give you a little catch up. Um, can you hear the birds? I can hear the robins. Um, yeah, so we're near Helifield. Been on the road for about six and a half miles. It's the 23rd of September and the weather's been pretty up and down all over the place, but today's gonna be a nice day. There's not much wind. It's a bit fresh at the moment, but it might get to 17, 18 degrees if we're lucky later on. So what we'll do, we'll catch you later on. We've got um, our usual roads to navigate through. We're gonna to head to Aldeyton now, then to Hetton, Craco. And again, if you're from round here, you'll know all these little lanes, um, make our way to Kettlewell. So we'll meet you somewhere further on down the road. And so 24 miles into the ride, we made it to Kettlewell as we headed towards Camgill Road, which is the start of the notorious climb of Park Rash. Leyburn, gradient one in four. So, 24 miles in, Kettlewell's here. We're gonna get over this beast. Um, I've come down it, but I can't remember last time I went up here, so come on. It's gonna be steep, I'll tell you that. So that first part of the climb, it's a bit steep, but then it levels out now on a mid-contour following the valley up. And then the fun begins. Mike's well ahead at the moment. And aren't the views just stunning? We're following Castlewell Beck, which is to the right, and we've got a spot height of 869 feet above sea level. And there's two ways of looking at this climb. There's the actual climb from Castlewell all the way to Coverdale, which is 2.64 miles, with an elevation gain of 944 feet. But the actual climb of Park Rash is a mile and a quarter long, or two kilometres. It's got an average gradient of 10.2%, with a maximum of 24.5. It's classed as a third category climb, and in part, it really is tough. So let's try and catch Mike, because he's miles ahead. You can make out Mike on the climb there, it just hits you right in the face. It goes up, left-hander, come on. Boy, oh boy. If you stopped on here, you'd find it hard to get going again. Now I'm standing up and I run a compact, so I've got a 34 on the front and a 30 on the back. And if I'm standing up, that means it's steep. Steep bit this. And just around the corner is the wooded section that we could see from way down below earlier on. A look at the contours on the Garmin. We're in that tree section now. It's kind of level up a bit. So you've got time to recover. Just don't overcook it. I can see Mike now getting a bit nearer to him. He's probably about 80 metres away. That's a long way on a climb though. Now I was actually discussing issues about climbing with Mike. So basically I weigh around 82 to 84 kilograms and Mike comes in at between 73 and 74 kilograms so he's significantly lighter and he does have an advantage and when Mike's fit he is like a mountain goat. Because when I put it into context on a day like this I have to have a really good day to keep up with Mike based on that weight difference. Mike's just spotted the uh, next section. Get a load of that. So having caught Mike up, he said that he needed a nature break. So I continued ahead. Then I could cheer him on as he made his way towards the summit. Come on, Mike. Nearly there, keep going, keep going. The summit's just up there. It weren't too bad, to be honest. It was hard, but it, if you just take your time, you'll get up it. So yeah, it's all about getting in the hills. The Pennines are all around here. It's the spine of England and there are sections up here where the Pennine Way actually crosses the road and certain towns and villages. So yes, I have not said it today yet, but I am a cyclist. I live in the Pennines. Um, these are the Pennines. At times I'm a bit guilty of going off towards the coast, Arnside, Silverdale, into the Lake District. But I dare say you can excuse me for that because they are equally just as good. So yeah, we're sticking to the conventions of what my cycling channel says it is and uh, there's got to be a hill or a good descent the section up here though on the other side is just remote wild and absolutely fantastic so this is the summit i think we're about 
1600 feet above sea level. Wow. Oh yeah, I'm just so glad that we came up here today. I've got Mike on the front there. We're still on Cam Gill Road on Come this on pretty Mike. long Come descent and it's not that steep, but it's a cracker. So I'm just about to close down Mike there, bridge the gap and overtake him on the right hand side. And when you're descending at speed, it's always nice to give a shout out on the left or on the right. Or you might say inside, outside, something like that. I'm just overtaking Mike there, right. probably maxing out around 38 miles per hour, but we've got to be careful. The road surface had some pickup. And we've got a right-hander, which is where we cross over Hemgill Beck, which then goes on to meet the River Cover. Hence the name of the area, which is Coverdale. Oh, this feels gritty. Oh, be careful. So we get over that crest, and it's quite straight. Looking at the playback, because the road surface is quite uneven, I'm having to use my arms and my legs just to control the bike as dampers, just to keep the bike planted on the road. We're about 30 miles into the ride. That's a nice descent, but there's a lot of animals on the road. You've got cows, sheep, also a lot of uh, cow poo on the road and run off from the hills. So we've basically come from where the grey misty clouds are there, down the valley, through here. And we've got this absolutely beautiful valley. Look at this. So I'm faffing again, filming. Mike's way down the road. Let's go and catch him up. And so I had to get my skates on because Mike was well down the road. And the downside to making these videos, and just to add this little clip here, results in me being about a mile or so behind. And still continuing down Cam Gill Road, we passed through places such as Bradley, Arkleside, Horse House, Gammersgill, and eventually we met up near Carlton, and we cycled about 34 miles at this point. This is Carlton, Mike. It's a nice place, isn't it? All the lovely stone buildings. Oh, yeah. Look at that one there. All the architecture around here is phenomenal, isn't it? I mean, look at that wooden thing outside its front door. Thing? What's that about now? It's a uh, proper flight. Oh, who did it by joiner, you know? Have a quick catch up with you. We're about five miles from Leyburn. Oh, I'm one of these lovely back lanes. Um, it's a funny feeling at the moment. Autumn's definitely here. It feels fresh. When the sun comes out, it's warm. You've still got plenty of greenery around. Here's Mike. He's not a happy bunny because for the last four or five rides, his gears haven't been right. He's got super record, Campag super record, and the bike shops can't get them tuned up. So then Mike started cycling really fast on the front, so he was like a man possessed, and he was giving it some big licks. So we're going down Coverham Lane here, which is near Midlam, and on the left, over the wall there, is Midlam Moor Horse Racing Centre. So Midlam is in Wensleydale, which means we're in the Yorkshire Dales, and it's where the River Cover now meets the River Yore. And it dates back to Roman times, and the castle in the town is reported to have been King Richard III's home as a child. And the castle dates back to 1190. Look at that, Mike. Oh, it's land doesn't know castle. It's not. Is it not? It's not, is it? We're in Middleham. Oh, sorry, yeah. Wrong country. Yeah. But it's a castle, isn't it? It's not, not like, like a derelict one. It's Middleham Castle, Mike. Yeah, I know you are. There's a sign up there. Yeah. Every day's a learning day for me and Mike. There's a tea room. Mike spotted a tea room there, and there's the shop we've used before at Middleham. Yeah, great little places these. And so we left Middleham and cycled on the A6108, which would take us all the way then into Laidburn. And here we're crossing over the River Yore on the Middleham Bridge. And that's quite impressive. So this is Laidburn, finally made it. We've got a cafe, come on. The tea room and cafe. Have you got black puddings, Mike? Have you noticed? Uh, can I have a black pudding with um, egg, please, and a bat? Yeah, um, a pot of tea, and I'll have um, a scone with jam and cream, please. And a can of Coke. Have you got any chips? <laughs> oh, he's your chips. <laughs> Sorry, I'm on. That, that's it, that'll be, yeah, yeah. Hey, Mike, they do black puddings, that's all right, innit? Yeah. Well, that's made your day. I bet if you knew they'd be black puddings, you could have got up part rash with a bit more hope. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, like an apparition of a black pudding. On the, on the big ring. Have you noticed he's doing his uh, social media again? <laughs> what, you on there? You on Wordle? Quirdle? Daily Word? <laughs> he is. Oh, that well, could be ours, that. Thank you. Did you see Mike jump out of his skin then? 
I'll tell you what, Mike, you can't make a bit of coke, can you? It gets straight in there. Is that the best one ever, Mike? Yeah. Look at that. Smells good. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. Keeping quiet that for a few minutes. Oh yeah. Hmm. How many thousands of miles have we cycled in search of a black pudding? It's gone time, Mike. Anyway, it's gone time. I'm going to try cream on first this week. Yeah, I'm going to give it a go. Standard procedure, cream on first. Against my better judgment. Obviously. So go on, what do you reckon to part rash? He won't as bad as I thought. No. You did it on the big ring, but... You didn't do it on the big ring. Yeah, I did. You didn't. You didn't. I'm still waiting that. Don't wait that. I've had no scones this week, Mike. I've not been in training. Mm. Not good, though. What are you doing with that cup? <laughs> Move that cup. So what uh, what route are you thinking, Mike? Oh. We're not doing Town Hill. No, we're not doing that. What's the other climb we're gonna do now? Butter tub. Yeah, we're gonna do butter tubs. And then what's going on next? Grinton. Grinton. Grinton Moor. So get you on the front of Grinton Moor. And no, then um I guess go. What because of all them noises on your bike? Driving me. I'll give up. Oh, don't give up. Do you, do you want me to give you a taxi? Yeah. Good little cafe, that. Right, well, that was Leyburn. <gasps> God, I'm frozen. So, this looks like a good opportunity to have a look at the route so far and what lies ahead. Looking at the map there, you can see where we're based in the United Kingdom. And the Isle of Man would actually fit inside the area that we're going to cover today. And if we look in more detail, you can see where we started. From the small town of Gisburn in Lancashire, as we made our way towards Helifield, Castlewell, the fantastic climb of Park Rash, with Middleham and Leyburn, which is where we are right now, where we've had a spot of lunch at the Post Horn Tea Room Cafe. And we've cycled 41 miles at this point, and the return leg is going to be extremely challenging, with some great climbs to get over. So straight out of Leyburn, got to take on the climb of Grinton Moor, with a summit at over 1,350 feet above sea level. And then we're going to take on Butter Tubs, which again will take us over 1,700 feet above sea level, with the final major climb of the day of Newby Head, which again is over 1,400 feet above sea level. And finally, we'll be passing through places such as Reith, Thwaite, Hawes, the Rubblehead Viaduct, Settle and Boltonby Boland. So let's get back to the ride, where we're cycling up High Street in Leyburn, we're taking a left onto Grove Square, which will then lead us onto Moor Road and Whipperdale Bank. There's there, there, Grinton, seven, Reith, eight. So if you see up there, that's part of the shooting range. So uh, we've got a nice little climb ahead here, heading further north before we start to track due west again. Oh, this is great. Really, really good. Yeah. Really enjoying this section. That bit there was brilliant. Yeah. This was a fantastic section of road with a big right-hander approaching here. But we cross over Cogden Gill, where the Grinton Moor smelt mill is located up in the hills to the left. So this is what Reef now, is it? Yeah. Yeah, sun's come out. Nice little place. And we're on the B6270. And then we cycled down this spectacular valley. It really was beautiful. Look at that view now. Reith is behind us and Thwaite is ahead of us. I think that's the River Swale down there. Brilliant. And at 53 miles, we cycled through a place called Low Row on Gunning Lane. And ahead of us was Mucker, and we continued to follow the River Swale, which was down below on the left. And when you cycle along here, you can't help but notice the buildings, and it just feels like time has stood still. This is more like the Dales, isn't it? This is lovely. We're, right. we're on the way now towards the wait. Uh, we're also on the B6270. Um, it's called Gunning Lane. Look at the view. You've got a beautiful sort of terrace area with a river. Look at all these little buildings. Absolutely picturesque. You've got river banks. Riversides, yeah, you've got crevices, glacial valleys, 
You've got um, cricks and crags. Mike, you've got to get your geology right or your geography so right. So we'll uh, see you somewhere, somewhere near Butter Tubs. I'm just moving a few miles further on down the road. We've cycled about 57 miles here and we're on the outskirts of Mucker and the hills all around me are the Pennines. In fact, the Pennine Way actually goes down this very road. And when I talk about feelings, this place is just a magical place to be cycling. The heart of the Yorkshire Dales here. Wow. Or is it Cumbria? I think it's North Yorkshire. Uh, this is 58 miles. Like Mike just said, this is Mucker. Mucker! We've got a stubborn headwind now. But it's uh, still a great ride. 60 miles covered, Mike. What's up here? Bottom. The climb of butter tubs, you can see there, Swaledale. Uh, you were all posh then, Dad. Did I? Yeah, butter tubs. We're about a third of the way up the climb now of butter tubs. That view ahead is magnificent, but it does look a bit imposing. It goes left, then right where the blue flashing lights are, the ambulance. But we're going at a nice steady tempo, really, really steady. If we can talk, it's not that bad. Still a headwind. This section now, it drops down a bit. You have the big ring if you want. And then it climbs again. So when you take on the climb of butter tubs, that big left hander you've just seen us go around, you're already at 1,500 feet above sea level, where you're on the way to the first mini summit, which peaks at over 1,600 feet above sea level. And you can see here we're on the final push, and again, it's quite steep. When you crest here, you're at over 1,700 feet, and in general, this section, it trends upwards for 13 miles. And it begins just after the descent of Grinton Moor, when you cross over the River Swale. So let's just move ahead, where me and Mike were on the descent, we got over that cattle grid there. And basically, yeah, this is just a brilliant section to ride your bike down. A bit of local knowledge goes a long way as well. I don't really know the lines to take. You just got to read it as it unfolds, really. And the descent is about three miles long, where we're descending all the way down towards Hard Raw and Hawes. And just picking nice lines, smooth lines, but still trying to have a bit of fun. I've just overtaken Mike there. I do like to descend, I like to go a bit quick if I can do. But I've always got to stress though, you know, you've got to know your limits and don't try to overcook things or you'll end up in the ditch. On this occasion we had a clear run, we had good visibility and relatively dry roads and we got down it safely in one piece. So that was the descent on the horse side of Park Rash. I don't know it well enough no. and it's too dangerous with sheep isn't it? Yeah. It's nice, it's a nice descent that. And the views are great. So what we're doing now is that was one big chunk, get that out of the way. Yeah, we're gonna do the climb over to Ribblehead Viaduct. And then we've got choices there, Ingleton. New Langcliff Scar. You can do that, Mike. I'll see you next week. No worries. No uh, worries, mate. And so this is Hawes, we've cycled 66 miles. And this is actually the Pennine Way we're on right now. And we're looking for the B6255. This is Hawes. Lovely. For the new behead climb. A bit of a cobble road though. And then Mike spotted a rocks and minerals shop. Well that's what gives it character. 420 quid? Yeah. Jesus, that's good. Yeah, look at all these fossils here. You can get them better cheaper. So we're on the final major climb of the day on the B6255. Got halls behind us, and ahead of us will be the Riverhead Viaduct, and we'll be much nearer to the three peaks with Ingleborough coming right in front of us soon. Got Mike on the front. Taking it easy again. We're making uh, good progress now. We're at uh, the Ribblehead Viaduct. Great views of uh, Mingleborough straight in front. So we're taking a left now onto the B6479. And then we're now looking forward to getting some refreshments at Settle. We always go there, don't we, Mike? Let's get some uh, oh, yeah, aid. We do, yeah, no, yeah, oh, well, yeah. Because if you go too hard, you blow. Are you alright, Mike? Got it. Are you doing your Sean Kelly impression? Oh, yeah. Is that what it is? He, he's trying to do a Sean Kelly impression. Really? Yeah. You've got to make the right calculation. And when you join uh, Team Jumbo Visma, you put Mike on the front Jumbo and, you, and you're going to smash it all day if you long. Go after Jumbo Visma, <laughs> you're going to blow. And once you blow, there's no coming back, you know. <laughs> 
You've got to make the right calculation. It's about the calculation. My name's Sean. I'm going. <laughs> Enough of all that nonsense. But then look at that great view of Penny Ghent in the distance. That's 80 miles. We're in Cecil. 88 miles. Feeling all right. Tell you what, mate. We're always in Cecil, aren't we? Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? We can go to Morecambe, Kendall, anywhere. Um, we always end up here, don't we? End up here all the time. Your bike's looking dirty. You've been going through yeah, some puddles, haven't you? Like you, wanna, you know. You lick yours clean as you're going along, don't you? I'll stop to clean that along the way. You don't bother? Clean it when I get home. You clean it by the riding, mate. Mike's been waxing his chain, but it makes a lot of noise. Mind you, we fettled with your gears, didn't we? And it got it a bit better up the climbs for you. Yeah. A lot better. Yeah. A couple Think, of little uh, turns. Yeah. It's funny how it was clicking that and I moved it in and it just it went all right. Yeah. So I don't know. I feel much better now after them refreshments. So, what we're going to do, head back to Wigglesworth. These are all the typical routes back me and Mike use now. Um, then we'll find our way to Bolton by Bolton and then basically it's Gisburn after that. So, I'll get Mike on the front, 30 mile an hour, all the way back. That's the plan. Hop, 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 hop. <laughs> and we continued cycling into the early evening as the shadows got longer and longer. Me and Mike had had a great day out on the bike and it's rides like these that makes me keep coming back for more and more for the love of this great sport of ours. And in the end, we cycled over 100 miles, with over 9,169 feet of elevation. I'm a cyclist, and I live in the Pennines, and thank you for watching. Big switch back here! Yeah, Look at that, wow! Hello! Hey up! Hey up! Well, I don't know the road here at all. So, let's go for a ride. Let's go for a ride. 